on JiggyJagwire.com. Welcome back to the program, Coast to Coast and Border to Border, on the iHeartRadio app today. Also, 267-22-JIGGY, if you want to give us a holla holla. 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific is when we are alive. I don't know why I pointed at a... It is a, <laughs> it is a fabulous Tuesday. We've got a fantastic guest we're going to be talking to here in just a few moments. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us over there on uh, Facebook, you can do so at facebook.com slash the Jiggy Jaguar. And uh, Gloria Rhodes Berlin is going to be joining us here in just a few moments to talk about a great, great book. If you want to get an, uh, get a hold of uh, her on our website, you can do so at JiggyJaguar.com. We're going to have the book up there and uh, a, a link to Amazon so you can pick that up. Uh, either while we're while we're talking to her about the book, or uh, when we uh, go to break, if you want to go purchase the book over there, uh, she is a fantastic, fantastic guest. And uh, let's let's go to her right now on the telephone. Gloria, how are you? I am very well, thank you. Now this, I wish I was spending the summer with Michael Jackson in Neverland. Yes. Uh, I, let's... I am his real estate broker. I am also his friend since he was about 12 years old. Now, l- and let's... he came to me to find him the paradise where he wanted to have a special retreat from the various world tours, and I found it for him. Well, tell, tell us about this book. Uh, it, is, it is a fantastic, the book fantastic book is about read. Neverland. It's Michael Jackson in search of Neverland, and he was he loved his animals, and he loved the circus, and he loved the green. He wanted to be in in a secluded place full of trees and, and deer, and the deer used to come from the Los Padres National Forest onto his ranch. And I discovered that ranch for him. It was known as the Sycamore Valley Ranch. And I found it, and he bought it from me. He came to me because he couldn't trust anybody. Every time he did anything, his name would be in the news or his picture or on radio all over the world. So he wanted someone he could trust, so he came to me. And I looked for this ranch for him, and I found it for him. Now, we've got a great guest with us today, Gloria Rhodes Berlin. She joins us live talking about uh, a great, great book, Michael Jackson in Search of Neverland. And uh, how, how did Michael Jackson find you? We were neighbors. My son used to play basketball with the Jacksons on their estate in Encino. We, were, we all lived in Encino, south of the boulevard. And they still have the, the family compound there which has been remodeled for the last two and a half years after Michael died, you know. Um, this coming June 25th is the fifth Jackson's passing into heaven. So anyway, uh, he's a beautiful human being that I'm sure must be flying with the angels and around, around the universe. The whole world loves him, and they still remember him, and they come from all over the world to celebrate him and his anniversary as as his as he went into heaven and he liked he, he loved heaven and he loved the moon and the stars and the trees and the animals and this mansion was a 14,000 square foot mansion two story an english tutor and it is an english tutor and that's what he wanted an english tutor and it's very hard to find english tutors in Southern California, because it basically the the Padres settled California, and it was all Spanish with tiled roofs. Anyway, I got him what he wanted, and he was the happiest man on earth the day he bought the ranch, and he took all his animals from Encino to Neverland Ranch, where he built special cages for them, homes for them, and he started... Uh, asking me to live with him on the ranch, and I stayed on the ranch with him for about three months. Um, a total of three months I lived on the ranch with Michael Jackson inside of Neverland. He inspected 
every inch of that ranch and prayed over every rock, creek, and he loved to climb up trees, and he loved uh, swimming uh, in the pool there, and there were lagoons and creeks that came from the mountains, and he had like a 180-foot swimming pool. So I've gone swimming with Michael Jackson, horseback riding, bicycling, and living with him there in the ranch was truly like heaven on earth, the far side of paradise. Uh, I would very much like, love you to, and, and, and he didn't want even his family to know that he bought the ranch, not even Latoya, uh, and he didn't want anyone to know anything about it because he was afraid they would leak it to the news and actually his family never wanted him away from them and he never had a home of his own until I sold him that ranch he always lived in hotels and motels wherever they had to stay while they were on world tour when he performed in all the stadiums around the world every stadium would sell out like 200,000 people 300,000 people so he needed a special retreat where he could find peace and tranquility and equanimity and truly uh, communicate with his inner self, and he was highly spiritual. He was not a wacko jacko. He was the most beautiful human being I've, I've ever met in my life, and, and I can't believe that anybody would nickname him that and, and it would stick. The English did or from the United Kingdom or something because he was so different. Anyway, the... The fifth anniversary of his passing is uh, June 25th, and Catherine Jackson and I were very close friends. She used to invite me over for coffee. We, we often went to parties at the Jackson Estate in Encino. Um, I met Janet, Reby, Latoya, and I met all the brothers, Jackie, Tito, Marlon. Randy was a very close friend of my son's and they played together. They were in the same school together, and uh, they, that's how I got to meet the Jacksons, because my son used to go and hide from his tutors on the Jackson estate, because he was a close friend of Randy's, and he loved playing basketball with the Jackson family. And they were also loving. It was just a, we became a part of their family. So I have a lot to tell in my book and the subsequent two volumes that I'm turning out. And right now, I'm in the process of doing that. And Michael Jackson is celebrated by all of his fans and friends that come from all over the world. Um, I will be holding seminars living inside of, of Neverland with Michael Jackson in Hollywood. There's a man that has seminars pertaining to in the studio with Michael Jackson. With me, it's inside of Neverland with Michael Jackson. And he loved, like, to jump from a tree onto the roof. He, he, liked, he, was like an, he was like a trapeze artist at times, from tree to tree. And he was not afraid. He's, and I told uh, Joe Jackson about it, that I was afraid he might injure himself. He said, don't worry about Michael. You worry about yourself. <laughs> That's all he told me. And uh, I remember LaToya being a little girl and Janet being a little girl. And Janet had a big, fat Winston, and she was almost as large as the Winston. <laughs> and then, amazing, she got a trainer, and she slimmed down to about 110 pounds and became a dancer and performer, and Michael helped her. And Jermaine Jackson was so loving and adoring, and so was uh, Tito, Jackie, Marlon. The entire family was a very, very warm, loving family, even Joe Jackson, um, who was a strict disciplinarian. And I'm very proud to have been friends with Janet, Michael, and LaToya, and, and all the brothers. And celebrities visited their home, like Cary Grant, Gregory Peck, Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney was a close friend of Michael. And he's the one that brought him onto the ranch that Bill Bone owned that was known as Sycamore Valley Ranch. And then without permission from Bill Bone, McCartney had been there a guest for about a year. And so Bill Bone's guest 
And then McCartney, without asking Bill Bone, asked him if he could do a film called Say, Say, Say. And when one of the ranch managers called Bill Bone in Palm Desert, he developed all of Palm Desert and built the, ne- the Sycamore Valley Ranch and the English Tudor house that he designed for his wife when he was 20 years old attending a university that they both attended when they were young people. Anyway, Bill Bone ordered them off the ranch and threw them all off the ranch and stopped the filming. Let the ranch manager do that. So, and, and that's why Michael wanted someone to relocate since they were thrown off the ranch and he didn't know where he was. Someone had brought him there or where it was located. He asked me, find me this paradise that I was on that I got thrown off of by its owner, and I located it. It was like a, finding a needle in a haystack. It was a, a needle in a haystack. It was like a miracle. And I did it within a very short period of time because Michael was leaving on the Bad World Tour and had to be ready to go on a tour around the world. And it's very heartbreaking for me to even think of him being in a mausoleum now um, in Glendale. And uh, I, I couldn't attend his funeral because I was so grief-stricken because I knew him since he was 12 until he died. And he was a very loving, adoring person to me. He always hugged me and kissed me and, and, and lifted me up in the air. He treated me like an angel. And um, he treated me as well as he treated all all his other friends, like Elizabeth Taylor. And everybody loved Michael so much. And uh, even Larry King, all his commentators, always had good things to say about Michael. Michael was a philanthropist, and he used to disguise himself. He rented a car so they wouldn't recognize him and disguised himself to go and had me go with him in an old dilapidated jalopy to help the poor that were sleeping in holes in the ground in Santa Monica and Venice. And he didn't want anybody to know that it was him. And he would give me money to give it to the poor that we visited that were homeless. And he tried to help the homeless, both women, children, and men that had fallen by the wayside. And he also tried to get everyone who was on drugs to detox, to rehab, not to do drugs, and he was given an award by President Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan for um, joining the war, the war against drugs. And so, you know, people were doing all those horrible drugs that kill people, and um, they were illegal drugs that are sold on the street. I won't name them all because there's too many, and I don't want to recall those drugs into anybody's mind. But I love the the entire Jackson family. My son grew up with the Jacksons. They treated him like a a family member. They treated me like a member of their family. They invited me to their parties, to their home, sometimes for breakfast, sometimes for lunch, sometimes for dinner, according to how Catherine would like to have company. Because Catherine, most of the time, was spending a lot of time alone. Uh, despite having had nine children, six boys and three girls. You know, everybody goes their way and everybody gets married or everyone gets their own career going. And Michael was such a beautiful person. He gave me many hats and jackets uh, signed by him. And I was most unlucky as people stole most of the stuff that Michael Jackson gave me with his own autograph inside of it, like the hats where his name was inside the head, and then he autographed it. And they were stolen from me. I can't believe it that people would do such horrible things. Um, But I love Michael, and he has a very dear place in my heart. And he's unforgettable. And and his estate has earned more money now since he's deceased. I understand he's worth about $6 billion. And uh, John Branca controls it. The people who administered his estate, most of them are dead except for John Branca. Frank DeLeo was the manager and Marshall Telfin was the, uh, the the accountant, the CPA. And uh, uh, T. Hayer was the ranch manager for Bill Bone. He passed on to and Bill Bray, the security guard, 
that was Michael Jackson's security guard since he was five years old. He passed on. So the only one that's living from that group is John Branca, the attorney. And he's been very controlling of the Jacksons and, and that over what Michael left because Michael had previously fired him and then just before he died, uh, like six weeks or so before he passed on, um, he reemployed uh, John Branca. And John Branca drew the contract, so he drew it to benefit him and not necessarily the Jacksons or Catherine Jackson, to whom um, uh, his, her son left everything to her and his three children. And his three children adored him. I met them all, Paris, Prince, and Blanket. And I've attended functions in Las Vegas, and the children know who I am. And they read the book. And it was risking it all when uh, he appointed uh, John Branca. And unfortunately, he was not very well. And uh, his final days were drawing near and unfortunately he's gone from us but he's never forgotten he's the greatest entertainer in the world well gl the gloria we, gloria we need to take gloria we need to take a break um when okay. we come back we're going to chat a little bit more with you about this book so uh stay yes. tuned here on the big broadcast for more with gloria about michael jackson here on the big broadcast coast to coast tomorrow to morrow. Spark Local is all about promoting local business, startups, talent, and nonprofits. See, we don't let your ads sit around and gather dust. We promote you. www.sparklocal.com and on Twitter at Spark Local. Wouldn't you love to be a lucky parent who's proud of your child's grades? Well, now you can turn poor grades around to A's, even when they're failing. Call right now for a free copy of the Top 10 Secrets to Improving Grades. Hello, I'm Dan Bassmajan. During my 20 years as an educator, the kids with failing grades were sent to me. I discovered that bad grades don't come from bad or lazy kids. They come from kids who are overwhelmed by everything they have to learn. That's why I created The Simple Way to an A. This system shows kids how to learn and how to ace every test. It's so easy. Your teenager will earn better grades in 30 days guaranteed and become the happy, confident kid you know they can be. For a limited time, Dan is offering all parents a free copy of his Top 10 Secrets to Improving Grades. Call now so we can send them to you absolutely free. Call 888-433-5918. That's 888-433-5918. Call 888-433-5918. That's 888-433-5918. Want to make some real money in no time? Want to take your family on a Disney World cruise? Or how about travel to Europe? Maybe you just want some supplemental income. Now you can do it all in 12 weeks. That's right, using our easy four-step formula for financial freedom. Making money has never been easier. Take action and start planning that family vacation you've always wanted. Isn't it time you started making what you're worth? 15000 in 12 weeks. We dare you to make more money. Check it out today, 15 k in 12 weekscom That's the number 15 k i n the number 12 weeks.com let's talk about international silver network the isn that's right a fun and exciting path to financial health wealth and security their mission is to provide one million meals to hungry children around the world by striking out hunger one coin at a time at isn we want to be more than just a coin company so we have chosen to support feed my starving children to provide meals to hungry children with every collectible coin sold the challenge while promoting financial health wealth and security the ISN business pros can not only achieve asset accumulation wealth preservation and their financial goals but can also help to meet the challenge of our mission to feed hungry children around the corner and around the world are you up to the challenge check this out your cost is hundred and ninety nine dollars plus a thirty nine dollar pro tool sweet launch you get everything it includes the achievers edge watch the achievers edge online also the ISN advantage autosaver 
being active. $100 PQV. That's right. ISN Advantage Auto Saver Sales Monthly. You can get all of that for only $104.95 a month. The Pro Tool Suite includes all sorts of different little goodies that we can't mention here on the radio. But ISN offers nine ways that you can pay. You've seen these guys like Glenn Beck, Alex Jones, and Rush Limbaugh selling coins. Now it's your chance to sell some coins and make some real money. Check it out online today. Listeners ask us all the time, how can we support the operation? Well, head over to our website at www.jiggyjaguar.com. That's right, jiggyjaguar.com. Click on the Amazon banner on our page. It will take you to Amazon. You will still see all the great prices, all the great selection, all the great convenience. But when you shop Amazon, we get a little bit of a credit from Amazon, and it helps us keep the operation going here. Recently, we had best-selling author Nat National Award winner Dan Perkinson, and he was talking about Amazon. I listened to your promotion for Amazon.com. You can buy my, you can buy book one and book two, which just came out. Look so at that! I encourage your listeners to go there and and support your operation. You don't need to buy anything you don't want or need. You just do what you do on Amazon. Buy everything that you usually buy there, but do it through our link at com. We get a small percentage, as I mentioned earlier, and it helps really fund our operation. Thanks to our friends at Amazon.com, and thanks for you for supporting us, the great listeners of the world-famous Chiggy Chegwire radio broadcast. Out Loud Minutes. The Out Loud Minutes. The United States is not one of the world's 100 most peaceful countries. That is according to the Global Peace Index. This is Malcolm Out Loud. The group uses 22 indicators to rank each country's score. America's lack of gun control, possession of nuclear arms, military conflicts, a low percentage of women in political office, and terrorism contributed negatively to the final score. But it was America's high incarceration rate that proved the biggest challenge. Well, the outlaw truth is, as the world's only superpower, humanitarian leader, and peacekeeper, the U.S. spends massive resources of both financial capital and human capital in an attempt to keep the peace around the world, and yet doesn't make the top 100? How does that happen? And you can find the full list of peaceful countries and those not so much back at TV. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from back or neck pain, Bonatti.com. The Bonatti Spine Institute succeeds where others fail. Back to the Chiggy Jaguar Show on the network. Oh, it's such a fun, fun day. It is the world famous Chiggy Jaguar Show. 24th of June. And we're live, 2 Central, 5 Eastern, 3 to 6 Eastern, 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific. Who knows what the hell I'm talking about anymore. It is uh, Gloria Rhodes Berlin is going to be with us back here in a few moments. She is the author of the best-selling book on the life of Michael Jackson. It's called In Search of Neverland. We've interviewed Gloria a few years ago, but we've got some new stuff that uh, has surfaced on Michael Jackson since then. Gloria knew Michael and his family rather well, as you can tell by the very first segment. Uh, Living only a few blocks from each other in Southern California, she was the real estate broker for Michael Jackson on the sale of the ranch called Neverland, his home for several years. Gloria grew up in El Paso, Texas, became a Las Vegas showgirl, Hollywood reporter, real estate executive. She knew many more showbiz stars including frank sinatra as well as many others tell me about uh old blue eyes old frank sinatra tell me about that old blue eyes i can say that not only was he one of the greatest singers in the world who michael jackson adored and loved but also the greatest lover wow and it was very hard <laughs> to get away from him but i could not tolerate smoking or drinking so i had to leave yeah his beautiful ambience in We've, his home, and I loved him very much, but I could not tolerate the parties every night. And then up every morning at, at the crack of dawn to go to the studio to film. No, to film. Um, we were filming, which we were so many. We were in so many films together. Now the first film we did, I think, was it was not. There's no business like show business. It was another one. Um, 
I can't think of the name right now, but anyway, Old Blue Eyes wanted the role that Marlon Brando played, and it was given by the producer to Samuel Gowen Sr. to um, the wonderful Marlon Brando who couldn't sing. He sang like a frog who needed a cough drop, <laughs> a scratchy throat. <laughs> And Marlon Brando had also been my lover. Wow. And, uh, yeah, both of those men were my lovers. But one didn't know the other one had been my lover. And I never wanted them to find out. I kept it a secret. It's one of my deep, dark secrets that'll come out in my autobiography. How <laughs> much they hated each other. And it was a film made by Samuel Goldwyn at the studios in Santa Monica in Hollywood. West Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, to make a long story short, um, Old Blue Eyes um, finally got even with Samuel Gowen Sr. for not casting him in that role, by not showing up on time, by causing the film to be uh, come like $6 million over budget. And Marlon Brando wanted to keep all of his friends working because he had a lot of friends who needed jobs and would have to pay their rent and their cars. So Marlon Brando also would blow his lines, and, and, and Frank Sinatra would just not appear until 9 or 10 in the morning because I took him to the studio. I couldn't get him up. He wouldn't go to bed at night. He would drink all night. So I would have to lug him out of bed, get him in the car, and try to pour him into the car. <laughs> and he was pretty big, you know. And when we got to the studio, Samuel Gowen Sr. was waiting at the gate. And he called him every name in the book and told him he was going to fire him and he would fix it. He would, so, so he would never, ever work again as long as he lived. <laughs> he threatened him. And I was, I was trembling. I was trembling because I was standing right next to him holding hands with him. But he never looked at me, only at Frank Sinatra. And, you know... <laughs> And we went in, you know, when you're making a film, you can't show up with big shadows under your eyes, bloodshot eyes, not knowing your lines, not knowing, you know, where you are. And you have to come in for makeup and toupee and clothes that match the other part of the film they shot. It, it's a, a, a very serious job, and you have to be there on time. Like, if you have to be there at 5 in the morning or 6, you get there. And you clock in and you show up into all these makeup, wig, costume, etc. So anyway, he finally behaved under duress and the film, the film was finished. However, that's re not relating to, but Michael Jackson adored Frank Sinatra. He also adored Elvis Presley. He wanted to be like Fred Astaire also. Like Fred Astaire was one of the greatest dancers, and Sinatra was a great singer, and Elvis Presley was also a singer. So he wanted this kind of a life. He was becoming uh, that kind of a performer. That's what he, his goals were. He had goals. That's why he became the greatest entertainer in the world. And I, I had to write a book about this because I know so much, so many intimate details about Michael Jackson, you know, and the raiding of Neverland and how he had to escape with his children to Dubai and how also Michael Jackson was eccentric like Howard Hughes for whom I had worked in films as a young actress. And um, I promoted Howard Hughes' films and throughout the state of Texas in, in the Southwest and I traveled as an actress for him. And then, of course, Michael Jackson wanted to be like all the greatest people that ever existed in Hollywood, and including Marlon Brando. Miko, Miko Brando was a close friend of, of Michael Jackson. He was like a sidekick. And they usually were hanging out together. Miko is the son of Marlon you know, who was formerly my lover as well. <laughs> anyway, um, and, and, you know, it's 
really very intricate how in Hollywood you can get to meet a lot of people. And when you're rising up the ranks among the stars, you never realize how very important and successful and brilliant stars these stars are going to become. To me, they were just ordinary people. And Michael Jackson loved everyone in the world because he had traveled to all the Asian countries and, and performed where for hundreds of thousands of people who adore him in, in the Asian world. The first concert he ever gave was in Japan and then in China and uh, all, all across Europe, the Mediterranean countries. He's, that's why he's known as the greatest entertainer in the world because he's performed on seven continents around and entertained people and shown them love and and sang to them, performed to them. And that's why he never had a home of his own, because he was always in world concert, touring around the world. And he started working at a very young age, when he was five years old. So you can imagine. That's why also, I think, in my opinion, he had worked all his life and had very few retreats and very few vacations, you know. Everybody goes on vacation at least once a year for a few months. Two or three months, anyway. School teachers do. Um, he, he was very fortunate that he married Debbie Rowe, and he had Vitilego, and he met her, and she had two of his kids. And um, they, he married her, but she had a problem also, and he wanted someone who was not, who was alcohol and drug free, so and problem free. Although she had been a very good person to him as a nurse, he had Vitilego. And he wanted to have be one color, just one one color, not black and white, and not uh, spotted. Uh, he showed me the vitiligo in his body that he had on his legs and his arms, and I said, and on his chest and his back. I said, Michael, you don't have to worry. Nobody's going to strip you to see if you have vitiligo or not. You know, he said, I would like to be all one color. So that's how he became white, not because he wanted to be a white man but because he wanted to have an even skin, all one color. And they gave him injections and pills, and they found a way to meet his criteria that he wanted to be all one color, either black or white. That's why he wrote the song, It Doesn't Matter If You're Black or White. He, a lot of the songs he wrote had to do something with his life, like The Girl Is Mine and uh, You're the One. You know, all the songs he's written and, and composed, from the bottom of his heart, have been something that are close to the process in his life, to what he's been going through in his life. And it's they're sincere songs that he created for the public. He's such a wonderful, wonderful human being. I don't think there can ever be another Michael Jackson, and he was wonderful since he was a child. And he was a dancer born with a rhythm, because when his mother used to constantly go to laundromats before she became super rich and take him with her, he would tap dance to the rhythm of the washing machines in in the laundromat. Can you believe that? As a child. He was a great child, a very hard at work even as a child all the time. And and his father was a brilliant well, well, manager. Well, Gloria, I hate, I hate to cut you off, my friend, but we've uh, just plumb run out of time. I appreciate you being with us today there, Gloria. Thanks for being on. You're so great. Appreciate it, Gloria. Have yourself a wonderful day. You're the best. We're going to take a time out. Frank Vernuccio on the way.